Hello, and welcome to Nextstar's video series on the Salesforce Developer Workbooks. In this track, we'll be walking you through the Visual Force Workbook. This video covers Tutorial 7, Customizing User Interface Components. Up to this point in our Visual Force lessons, we've only been modifying pages that look and feel like the standard auto-generated force.com pages. In this lesson, we're going to use some components that have no style associated with them to allow us as developers to have full control over the style of the page. To begin, we're going to create a new Visual Force page, and we're simply going to call it Style. Go ahead and create a new page. Now let's open the page editor. And for this new page, we're going to use the account standard controller, like we've been using in our previous lessons. And I'm just going to go ahead and add some simple content. Go ahead and save that. got that. Now to kind of strip away the default style we're going to go ahead and add a few few parameters to the page. We're going to say sidebar is false. That's going to remove this element over here on the side and then we're going to also go ahead and say show header equals false as well. Now when we save that Although we've removed most of the elements on the page, we still need to go one step further to ensure that no force.com style gets applied to this page. We do that by saying standard style sheets equals false. And now we save it. And now our new Visual Force page is a blank canvas for us to design however we wish. We've got all the force.com elements and style removed, and we can begin to customize it the way we like. So now that we've removed all the default style, let's go ahead and set some custom style to this page. Right underneath the Apex page tag, we're going to go ahead and add a style tag. And within the style tag, we're going to go ahead and set some options. Let's set the body font family to Arial. And we're going to set font color for H1 to red and save it. Now you can see that these style options we set have been applied to the page. And this is a good example of some, you know, some in some embedded CSS within your Visual Force page. But most of the time, you're probably going to have your CSS defined in a separate file. Now, if you wanted to include an external style sheet, you would do it like this. The Apex style sheet val value, you go ahead and set that to the URL of the CSS file you want to include. Unfortunately, now this is the URL given by the Visual Force workbook. The, at the time of recording, this file does not exist. So I'm going to move right along and show you how to reference CSS files that you upload to your force.com environment. So how you do that is go back to back in your force.com environment. I'm going to go ahead and select develop. Static resources. Let's say new. Call this style. We're going to go ahead and upload the static resources provided by the Visual Force workbook. And we're going to set cache control to public and save. So now we've uploaded a zip file, and let me just show you what's in that zip file, just so you have an idea. 
that's provided by the Visual Force workbook. And inside there, we've got a style sheet, and we've got some images associated with it. But we went and uploaded that to, to force.com. We've got that in our environment. And now let's go back and reference that in our Visual Force page. So I'm going to go ahead and change the style sheet element again. And we're going to say Apex style sheet value. And then we're going to use some Apex and say the URL for resource.style. And we're going to reference the style sheet that's part of this static resource we created. And click Save. And now you can see that there's a different style applied to this page. Now just a reminder, the resource global variable has a field for every static resource that you upload. This is very similar to the page uh, global variable that we used in previous lessons. These are very useful for referencing parts of your force.com environment you've created and allowing to tie everything together. Also, this command right here, the URL for, this tells force.com to generate you a URL for this given resource you've referenced here. To wrap up this tutorial, we're going to iterate over some force.com data using unstyled lists and tables. Now, in tutorial 5, using standard interface components, we showed you how to iterate over bit different sets of data and create page elements. We're going to do a similar thing now, but we're going to do it without any of the built-in style and show you how to take that data and kind of manipulate it as you wish. So to start this part, we're going to go over to our account display page that we created for previous tutorials. And we're going to go ahead and add a data table block to the bottom of our page. Go ahead and click Save, and I'll explain what that does. So what we're doing here is we're creating a new element, an Apex data table. We're tying it to the account we're referencing and the contacts enclosed there. And the two columns in the table are the name and phone number of that given account. So let's go ahead and set an account ID in the URL so we can take a look at what this is going to create for us. So now we've got two examples. We've got an Apex page block table which is this up here. And now we've got our data table, which is completely unstyled and looks like that. We've got Barbara Levy and Josh Davis. And so using the data table, we can get just the data out and apply whatever style we choose and kind of differentiate our visual force page from the built-in force.com look and feel. So we can also create an HTML unordered list instead of a table by using the data list rather, rather than the data table element. So I'm going to go ahead and change that. And data list is very similar to the data table. We've defined that this is the values are coming from the contacts and we're designating our variable. And then we're, we're referencing the name of the item within the output text element here. We'll go ahead and click Save and see what that looks like. And there we go. We've gone ahead and changed that table to an unordered list. And now, if you really want to control how this works, we can go ahead and rather than use the, the data list element, go ahead and replace that. Now this example shows the actual creation of an unordered list using HTML, the apex repeat element allows you to do just iteration. This will let us iterate over our account contacts and give us the most control over the output. And now this example is simply going to imitate the unordered list we just created. So if I save, we see no change. But this gives us the most control we could ask for 
and can really let us do whatever we want. So if we want to make a completely custom interface and do some kind of design that's really far out of the box from what Force.com offers, Apex Repeat is the best way to do it because it gives us full control. That concludes tutorial seven. In our next video, we'll cover tutorial eight, inputting data with forms. Thank you for joining us. For more great content, click to follow us on Google+. Thank you.